This is the Little Red Book. Quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong, nicknamed the Little Red Book, was compiled by Lin Biao and published in 1964. It contained quotations from a variety of Mao's writings and speeches, representing Mao Zedong thoughts. There is little doubt that the Little Red Book deified or godified Mao Zedong amongst the civilians, which raises the question, was it justified? In this video essay, I would argue that, despite the relative political stability that the Little Red Book brought, due to its spark of the Red Guards movement and its use in the educational system, the deification was not justified. After the failure of the Great Leap Forward during the mid-1960s, Mao's political reputation reduced within the party. He was still up there, but there were some doubts. Liu Shaoqi replaced him as the head of state, leaving him with the powerless title Chairman of China. Now, compared to Mao, Deng Xiaoping and Liu were moderates, allowing peasants to sell crops, have small private properties, etc. And Mao was unhappy. The party was slowly dividing. Intellectuals started to lose faith in Mao, and China's politics looked pre-revolution. Have two groups equally as powerful with fundamentally different ideologies. To maintain power, Mao initiated plans to solidify his reputation amongst the civilians, as he believed gaining people's support would benefit him more than those of his fellow party members. He worked closely with the Minister of Defense, Lin Biao, to compile the Little Red Book. One billion copies were distributed at the first three years of publication, for free or at insanely cheap prices. People carried around the Little Red Book everywhere, constantly reciting it like some holy text. People attributed their prosperity, happiness, and luck on Mao, devoting their lives as followers of China's chairman, creating a cult of personality, with the Little Red Book as its symbol. This deification set a foundation where Mao had most people's support, making its initiation of the Cultural Revolution without much opposition from the population, which would have caused political instability. Then, the Great Paltarian Cultural Revolution! happened, and Deng and Liu were stripped of most power. The Little Red Book separated Mao from the Communist Party and portrayed his cultural personality as the identity of communism instead of the party's agenda. According to Yuan Bo, China's politics traditionally emphasized oneness, and whenever oneness is not achieved, it was chaos. So in a way, the Little Red Book's portrayal of Maoism unified the Chinese civilians once again. However, history has repeatedly told us that this type of propaganda often goes out of hand which was exactly what happened. As students and young adults became more and more infiltrated by Mao Zedong through the Little Red Book, they grew hate for the party officials and thought, if they stopped being revolutionary, then we should be. Hence, they called themselves the Red Guards, Hong Wei Bing, and initiated most of the destruction during the Cultural Revolution. As most Chinese teenagers of the time followed or were part of the Red Guards, any adults remotely revisionary will be condemned, often beaten up, and sometimes to death. Now, the details of the destruction is out of the scope of this video, but just remember that it was absolutely horrifying to live in China at the time. The Red Guards would chant lines from the Little Red Book while marching down the street to justify their own actions. One of the first things that the Red Guards did was crusading, quite literally by foot, from all over China to Tiananmen Square to meet Mao. Remember, that's in Beijing. Holding copies of the Little Red Book as a protective talisman on their way, almost like the long march all over again. Because the Red Guards had the support of the PLA, they could rampage on however they wanted, despite the opposition from Deng and Liu's forces. Remember, Big Stick Policy. This was where the Four O's and other movements came, based on the interpretations of the Little Red Book, and the public couldn't really say anything. The society looked almost anarchist, as places where the PLA couldn't be, the Red Guards were the heads. Many agreed that the Cultural Revolution was a chaotic time, and the roots of it was mostly the Little Red Book's partial stimulation of the Red Guards by giving them some form of tangible justification. However, I must make one thing clear. This was not the fault of the Little Red Book. On its own, this was only propaganda literature. It was the vague words in it that encouraged people to justify everything in it, and it simply went out of hand. When the Cultural Revolution happened, all schools were shut down for half a year to have the curriculums rewritten, and this new curriculum was heavily based on Mao Zedong's writings, such as the Little Red Book. The rewritten textbooks contained many quotations from the Little Red Book, especially the history textbooks. As Mao's quotations were often highly historically relevant, they would usually be used to reflect a passage or chapter in the textbooks. For example, in the public school history textbook of Shanghai published in February 1971, the Little Red Book, as a chapter, appeared Thrice. Also, in the same history textbook published in 1970, out of the mere 109 pages, it quotes its 74 phrases from the Little Red Book, all in big, 
bolded characters. Despite this textbook audience of primary school students, it included many exercises of complicated political topics. For example, in the same history textbook, it included this exercise at the end. Just imagine how dry and confusing this would be for primary school students of the time. Due to the forced integration of the Little Red Book into history textbooks, it added bias to them, unnecessarily politicizing historical content, resulting in the textbooks being structurally unsound and logically confusing. Even though the contents of the educational system changed quite drastically, the traditional memorize as much as possible studying and teaching methods remained. Ironically, although the cultural revolution was really against these traditional old feudalistic methods, they still strongly lingered on. Students often had to memorize large passages of the Little Red Book just to pass their classes. In higher levels of education, many analysis assignments and essays are highly based on mouse quotations and works, with questions like this suggesting the side that their argument probably should be. And yes, that just further adds to the bias. Although the goal of this educational system was to further deify Mao Zedong amongst the students, this became the only thing that the students knew how to do. This system did not increase literacy, instead resulting in a generation that is uneducated, indoctrinated, and illogical. Creating the lingering trends of speaking is doing, emphasizing is implementing, still very much seen in China today. In conclusion, all of the deification of Mao Zedong amongst the civilians in the Little Red Book brought a brief periods of political and social stability. The subsequent Red Guards movement and its poor use in the educational system made this unjustified. To be honest, looking at this alone, there are some pretty decent arguments within the Little Red Book using historical evidence and such. And the unjustified deification comes from people during the Cultural Revolution using this book as a justification for the destructive purposes. Again, it is not about the Little Red Book itself. It is how people used the Little Red Book that had problems. Four decades later, another chairman of China, Xi Jinping, published his own version of the Little Red Book called Study Xi or Xue Xi, but digitalized to a phone application where all party members, civil servants, and teachers must read it every single day. They have to. The app tracks their reading progress. Well, perhaps the methods of maintaining power will just never change in China. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.